Hi, my name is David A. Wheeler, and I'm here today to talk about creating readable Lisp S expressions, curly infix, neoteric, and sweet expressions. Here's an outline of my talk. First, I'm going to talk about the problem of awkward S expression notation, and then some solutions, some new reader abbreviations, curly infix, neoteric, and sweet expressions. And finally, I'll talk about some tools that implement these. If you haven't already guessed, this presentation presumes you already know the basics about a Lisp-based language, such as Scheme, Common Lisp, Emacs Lisp, Arc, and so on. The traditional S expression notation used by Lisp-based programs is simple, it is clear, but it is also awkward. Look at this example. S expressions don't support infix. They use a very non-standard call format and frankly they require just too many parentheses. It's not just me. Many find traditional S expression notation awkward. Paul Graham says, I've used Lisp my whole programming life and I still don't find prefix math expressions natural. Larry Wall, creator of Perl, says Lisp has all the visual appeal of oatmeal with fingernail clippings mixed in. Here's another comment. After 13 years of Lisp, 3 or 4 of Python, I prefer re writing Lisp, but Python's easier to read. And the jargon file says that Lisp stands for lots of irritating superfluous parentheses. So what are the requirements for a Lisp notation? Any Lisp notation must be general and homoiconic. General means that it has to be useful regardless of the underlying semantic. Homoiconic means that its surface syntax needs to clearly present the underlying data structure. These are important properties for things like macros and processing various data in lists and so on. Sadly, past readable notations were often not general or homoiconic. This includes, for example, the original M expression notation of Lisp. And this is why those other readable notations failed. Now, we could just give up on trying to make Lisp S expressions readable, but readability matters. Paul Graham again. When you program, you spend more time reading code than writing it. A language that makes source code ugly is maddening to an exacting programmer, as clay full of lumps would be to a sculptor. Now there have been some past successes in making Lisp S expressions easier to read. In fact, for over 50 years, Lisp has had abbreviations. For example, TickX means quote X. The list ABC actually means a much more complex expression. It does take time to learn and implement abbreviations, but if the construct is common, they can be worth learning, especially if they can work across multiple lists. I founded the Readable Project to try to solve this problem, and our approach has been to add new abbreviations. This means that normally formatted S expressions just keep working. We've created three new expression tiers. Curly infix, neoteric, and sweet expressions. Curly infix adds infix operations, but in a lispy way. Neoteric expressions start with curly infix, and they also allow traditional function call notation. And finally, sweet expressions start with neoteric, and they deduce parentheses from the indentation. This greatly reduces the number of required parentheses. You can update your reader to support these, and these notations are general and homoiconic. So let's start with curly infix expressions. Curly infix expressions are just S expressions plus the notion that curly braces contain an infix list. A simple infix list represents exactly one operation in infix order. It's basically just an ordinary list expressed in a different order. And simple infix list has to have an odd number of parameters, at least three parameters, and all the even parameters have to be the same symbol. And this is just how infix represents one operation. These map to even parameter followed by the odd parameters. This means that curly 2 plus 3 maps to plus 2, 3. Otherwise, it maps to NFX parameters. This means that 
curly infix expressions are homoiconic. Now there's no built-in precedence, although you can use nfx to do that, and you can use simply another curly brace embedded for another embedded list. Here are some examples of curly infix. On the top left are, well, the basics. Curly n less than or equal to 2 simply maps to less than or equal to n 2. You can have multiple operands. 2 star 3 star 4 simply maps to star 2 3 4. There's no precedence, but that's usually not a problem. You can say 2 plus another curly 3 star 4 and this maps in the obvious way. You can use mixed operators. This will insert an NFX symbol to the front and then you can define NFX to do whatever it is you want it to do. Neoteric expressions start with curly infix and then add a more traditional function call notation as an abbreviation. So E open paren material inside is an abbreviation for open paren E space material inside. E brace material inside is an abbreviation for open paren E and a curly infix expression, abbreviating a common and useful case. E bracket material inside is an abbreviation for bracket access and an unprefixed open paren dot and then E is simply E. This is a useful escape mechanism. Now technically this does change S expression syntax, but normal S expressions are untouched and pretty printers can trivially fix the few that remain. Here are some examples. F of 1, 2 is simply an abbreviation for open paren F 1, 2. F curly n minus 1 is an abbreviation for open paren F of n minus n1. And basic sweet expressions start with neoteric expressions and deduce parentheses from indentation. An indented line is a parameter of its parent. Later terms white space separated on a line are parameters of the first term. Now if you have a line with exactly one term and no child lines, it's just that term. If you have multiple terms, they're wrapped up into a list. An empty line ends an expression. Empty lines before any expressions are just ignored. Now indentation processing is disabled inside parentheses, square brackets, and braces, and this means again that normally formatted S expressions work normally and this stops the lots of irritating superfluous parentheses that Lisps are so famous for. Here's an example of a sweet expression. In this case, it's the definition of a factorial function in scheme. But notice, however, that we have infix. We have a more traditional function call notation. We have indentation deducing parentheses, so we don't need nearly as many. But in fact, these are all abbreviations, and a sweet expression reader would transform these into a more traditional S expression notation. In fact, a sweet expression reader would accept either format. Here's another example. This is from an actual program written using sweet expressions. In this case, it's defining a function called long and boring, and it returns results depending on its input. If it's not a pair, it returns false. If it's not a list, it returns false. If its length is less than the boring length, it returns false. Otherwise, it returns whatever boring returns. Here's another example. Notice in the middle that there's a condition, pair, and that if that condition is true, a more complex expression is computed. Notice that the indentation makes very clear how this code relates to the rest of the code. Notice that each of these tiers helps improve the readability of traditional S expressions without losing their power. On the top right we have traditional S expressions, curly infix expressions convert infix, neoteric lets you express notation using more traditional prefix notation, and sweet expressions eliminate the need for many parentheses. Here are some refinements on sweet expressions. First of all, semicolon comment only lines are completely ignored. Even their indentation is completely irrelevant. This makes them useful to do things such as separating the lines without ending a whole expression. Indentation 
can be expressed with one or more space characters, tab characters, or exclamation points. A line with only indentation is an empty line. If an expression starts indented, then indentation is disabled. Now, using the bang character as an indentation character is a little surprising, but it solves past problems with indentation-sensitive syntaxes and enables highlighting. And of course, you can mix these characters as you desire. And here are the advanced sweet expression capabilities. A backslash backslash, aka a split between datums, starts a new line at the current indentation level. This is particularly useful for keywords. A backslash backslash after the indent, aka the group symbol, represents no symbol at all. This is useful for lists of lists, for example, the let star variables. A dollar, aka the sublist, restarts lists, and this is inspired by Haskell. In this case, the right-hand side, including any sub-blocks, becomes the last parameter of the left-hand side on that line. If there is no left-hand side, it just puts the entire right-hand side into a list. A leading quote and so on, followed by a space or tab, quotes the rest. And these advanced capabilities simplify using indentation, even in complex circumstances. So here's an example with a let star. In this case, we have a more complicated list of variables and initial values and therefore we can use backslash backslash to identify a list of lists. We have a number of tools available. Unsweeten starts with sweet expressions and translates them to S expressions. This can be used in make files, sort of like a compiler. You can pipe it into a list implementation so you can use Sweet expressions interactively. You can also use Unsweeten simply to try out sweet expressions, see what they do. Sweeten goes the other way, it starts with S expressions and translates them to sweet expressions, and this can simplify transition to sweet expressions. Sweet Run translates and runs sweet expression scripts, scripts. and that means you can use Guile, SCSH, CLISP, and so on directly using sweet expressions. Neoteric Guile runs Guile using Neoteric expressions, and Sweet Guile runs Guile using Sweet expressions. All of these tools are free Libre open source software, FLOSS, available through the MIT license. So let's see an example of Sweet Guile. First of all, it's now a useful calculator. We have Infix. But we have not lost the power of Lisp. traditional function call notation works. We can also define functions. I'm going to paste in a definition of the factorial. Works just fine. In fact, you can do this because it's a sweet expression reader. But in fact, you can also just use traditional S expression notation if you want to. Let's demonstrate unsweeten. So let's see an example of sweeten. First, let's start with some simple code. And now let's show a sweetened version of it. So in conclusion, these readable notations make list-based source code easier to read, easier to understand. There are three tiers, curly infix expressions, neoteric expressions, sweet expressions, and they are all simply abbreviations, additional abbreviations that you can add to your existing reader. More information and implementations are available at the Readable project, readable.sourceforge.net. Thank you for your time.